Hi, Chuck. Um, Here we are again. <laughs> I have another question from Mark T. Thank you, Mark. Um, what drills and teaching methods does he find the most useful for training in transitions between the various parries? Oh, good subject. Very good subject. Okay. Yeah, this is a, a very good question. Unfortunately, I can't answer the whole question here today. Uh, I need a, a student or a partner to demonstrate the drills and the teaching methods. Uh, later on, uh, in another session, when we go to my fencing cell, where I can have a partner, then I can demonstrate the method of, uh, or my approach for teaching in the individual lesson, and uh, answer this question more completely. But what I can do today is show the transitions from one parry position to the other. To, to talk about parry positions uh, and the kinds of parries you have and the way you go from one parry to the other. In fencing, uh, parries are very important, but what's more important is how you get from one parry to the other. Uh, that's where the real defense is, and, I, and this will become clear as I demonstrate it. Most fencers start their, uh, their, uh, their bout or their positions uh, or take a guard position uh, fencing from the sixth position. That's always advisable. There are other fencers that prefer to start uh, from uh, octave position. They fence with a low guard position in this fashion. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the best success you can have is by combining them. Like I start in six and the, at the command defense, I might step forward, dropping into a top, come back to six, to a top, keeping the blade in motion all the time, up and down, uh, to keep my opponent uh, guessing as to what I'm going to be doing with this foil if they attack. So the sixth position is here, and the, the, the backup period of sixth is cart under most conditions. So you have cart. Six. This is a transition from one defense, defense the, the, the cart position defending the inside high line, the six defending the outside high line. And the, uh, the most useful or, or uh, most used opening hand movements are really from cart to six, and then you can alternate that from a top to six, you see. So you're operating from the sixth position going to other places to keep the blade in motion, to keep the blade aligned. It would look something like this. I, I might step forward into a ta, come back to six, step forward into cart, and come back to six, step forward into septim, and come back to six, you see. And uh, the thing I want to talk about is how to get from one position to the other, and the other kinds of uh, movement from one position to the other. So you have lateral parries from six cart, six cart, that's lateral. And then you have vertical parries. Octave, six, octave, six, and the two most fundamental uh, hand movements you have in fencing really are right there. We could add uh, a septim and uh, with a diagonal movement to six, septim, diagonal to six. That's a combination of six, uh, or pardon me, septim, six, septim, six, then you have a combination. The important thing here is when you move to the septim position, that as you recover to the six, you're covering the line, you see. So if a blade is coming in, you're, you're sort of sweeping the line. And of course that's true of all uh, pairs and all the movements you have with pairs. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, move away from lateral and vertical movement, not to circular movement. Uh, Circular movement is from like, if you're going from six to six, six to six to six to six, you see. To, and that's a very nice way to cover targets. If somebody's coming in, just a circular movement sweeping the target area will pick them up, you see. Then you can back up that circular six if you fail to find a blade with a lateral movement, say to cart. So circular six, cart becomes a very nice combination for overall defense. If you don't find the blade in circular six, you probably find it in cart. Now the converse to that is true also. If I'm inviting my attack from 
card position, then I can defend with a circular card action or a lateral movement to six. So a cart, circular six, lateral movement to six. Uh, pardon me, cart, circular cart. So the combination then is cart, circular cart, six. Cart, circular cart, six. That's something you can practice by the hour. And the trick is to keep the movement small, only large enough to protect the target area. You don't want large sweeping movements for obvious reasons. So we've talked so far then about uh, lateral and circular. I'm doing circular six to lateral, circular cart to lateral to six, you see. Then I want to touch on diagonal parries, which we, we sort of touched on already, we'll get back to that. Uh, I say I, for whatever reason, parry septim, which is a, a rarely used parry, quite frankly. But it's a nice parry to use as a combination with six to sweep the target area. You see, septim six, septim six. You're bound to pick up the oncoming blade somewhere in there. If you don't get it, so it's diagonal to septim and diagonal to six, if you don't find the blade, then uh, lateral to cart six, cart six or cart circle cart six lateral, circle six. So we're talking about moving from one pair to the other uh, using lateral, vertical, diagonal movement. Uh, when I was a young fencer learning this stuff, I used to, uh, I was going to San Francisco State, I was a uh, collegiate fencer in those days, and uh, I rode the M car, which was a car on the uh, railroad tracks going down 19th Avenue, about a mile to my home, and I would sit on the M car as we're clattering along the street for about a half an hour ride, and I would practice these movements without the foil. I'm sitting there, I, might, I could have a book to read to pass the time, but what I would do is practice my combinations. Circle six, circle six, circle six, nice practice. Lateral cart six, cart six, cart six, very nice, hey, 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 hey. Circle, 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 lateral, 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 lateral. Uh, how about lateral circle? Hey, circle. So I'm going from six to cart to circle cart, to six to circle six, back to cart to circle cart. A combining lateral movement and circle and circular movement. My policy as a fencer, and that remained throughout my career, was to always combine uh, these movements, uh, circular movements and lateral movements and vertical movements, you see. A very nice backup parry to a top from six. I go down, you notice I'm arcing the blade. So if anything is coming in, I have a chance of picking it up and sweeping it to the outside line. But I go lateral to a top. If I don't find anything, I know the oncoming blade is coming in here. So it's lateral to uh, a top. If I don't find it, I continue around to cart. So I have. Uh, 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 vertical movement to diagonal movement. Vertical down to a top, diagonal up to cart. And this is a very nice feeling uh, on the hands. It makes, and it makes for a very good defense. You never have to worry about failing to find your opponent's blade if you have backup parries to take care of you in case you don't find their blade, which is at least half of the time. Uh, you never know how your opponent is going to attack you. And so you want to have a very nice arsenal at your disposal for defense. So once again, uh, if, you, uh, if you have these combinations, it takes a lot of pressure off of your defense. I want to add this footnote to it. It's unwise to ever hold your ground and parry, kind of the way I'm doing in this demonstration. Uh, parries are, are best performed with a retreat. So I might be fencing, I advance, and I retreat, I advance, and then the attack comes, I step back and parry. That step back gives me a little extra time to do my parries and allows me time in case I don't find the oncoming blade to go into another position. And that's again where the combination parries are very important. So I would say in your practice, uh, uh, practice essentially what I'm talking about and also 
practice doing it without the foil, so you get a, you get a conceptual idea uh, that's a little bit clearer. With the foil, of course, you're getting a very good idea, but without it, you really have to think about it. Circle six, circle six, circle six, circle six, cart, circle cart, circle cart, circle cart, six, cart, six, cart, six, cart, octave, cart, octave, cart, octave, cart, septime, six, septime, six. As you can see, octave is backed up by cart, and it can be backed up by six. <coughs> uh, septime is backed up by six, invariably, six. Uh, I haven't mentioned preem parry at this point, but preem looks like this, and it's in, uh, increasingly in modern fencing, it's used as back shots on the repost become more useful. So I do preem and down the back to the point for the repost. Preem, down the back to the point. Uh, 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 yes, down the back with the point. The backup parry to preem is a top. So I go preem if I don't find the blade, I come down covering the target to a top. So preem, a top. Let's say I go to preem, I don't find the blade, I go to a top and I don't find the blade, and then I go to cart, I don't find the blade, then I go to six. So Pre, top, cart, six. There's another nice set of combinations here involving lateral and diagonal parries, as well as vertical. Uh, I think that much information should give you more uh, material than you really uh, need for any given fencing bout. And all of these parries and all of these combinations should be uh, studied because in any bout, you never know which one of these combinations will be most useful. Uh, every fencer that you fence will present you a different challenge as to how you're going to parry, you see. The important thing is to have parries, the important thing is to have combination parries, and the important thing is to retreat with your parries. You don't want to hold your ground and parry. That, that's too much of an encumbrance and you lose your rhythm in the process of parrying better. So on that note, I think